Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it's your boy Spencer taking a look at, uh, yeah, the new, not new, I think it's been out for a while and there's new iterations of it, but this is the Meta Quest 2. So if you're watching this video, you're wondering, you know, is it worth it? Should you buy it? And, you know, just my general thoughts. I've had it for three days, so I'm going to try to go over everything here. Uh, it comes in a very nice box, whatever that's worth. I don't even know if people do unboxing videos anymore, but the important thing is, is that it's very simple. It is simply just the headset the two controllers and I think that the there's a charger in there it's a regular USB-C so I ended up charging it with my MacBook charger and that kind of just worked out for me in general one thing that is worth mentioning is that it is actually really easy to set up now I have played video games my entire life you know just as people typically do and uh, so it, it kind of came naturally to me because again these are you know like game controllers it's not like you like put on a glove or anything but I would say anybody who's you know ever played a video game just in general uh, it comes very naturally, it takes time, but they really do place it where your fingers naturally lay and kind of the buttons fall into place. It is a little bit weird, The there are the two like buttons on top, the A and the B button. I don't know if you can see that there. And you always like, you're traditionally like video game wise want to click on those to do things, but you kind of learn that the trigger button is kind of like basically everything. And really, I guess it's more like a computer. It's like a right click on your mouse or a left click, however you want to think about it. It's ambidextrous, so you can kind of do whatever you want. But yeah, the se setup is very simple, and that's pretty cool. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is the reason I got this is me and my girlfriend really like to have date nights on Saturday. And we, you know, play things like Uno and other, like, board games. And I was looking to kind of, you know, do something to the next level, something really fun that we could both enjoy. And I thought of the, like, any VR headset. I didn't really know anything much about them. Now, there are the really high-end ones, uh, obviously. There's, like, Valves that has one, and I think... I can't think of the other ones, what they're called. But in any case, they're much higher-end, right? This is a... I mean, it is advertised, and it is really an entry point for VR. You know, to connect to a computer, which is something that was really important to me. I have a fairly small space to work with. Uh, it is, I guess, just enough. You know, it's in my living room, but, you know, I have my PC in my, like, office space, and I just definitely don't have room, you know, to do anything there. So I have my desk set up and I have everything going on and obviously like the pricing is just way different and you know close to a thousand dollars and actually and I maybe I'll put it on the um, screen right here as you guys are watching I got this from Fat Kid Deals I don't it's obviously not sponsored or anything but this guy's really good deals and he talked about it's two fifty and you get a fifty dollar like essentially like a gift card voucher for your purchase now the fifty dollars doesn't go off uh, when you check out it like literally creates like a virtual gift card for you so to speak. So I guess I paid, you know, two fifty for it, but then the extra fifty dollars I just spent on household items like laundry detergent and just all these basic things that I would have bought at the store anyway. So really, I bought this at two hundred dollars, and I guess that's like one of my main points that I want to talk about in this video. And that, yeah, this thing is really nice, right? I'm not here to like technically argue that it's not three hundred dollar like piece of technology. It's uh, it's really amazing, but the problem is like there are like no free games on the VR system. And that is a real big issue, um, in a sense. And the reason I say that is, well, I got it for two hundred dollars, right? Technically, after I got the fifty dollar gift card, I bought it on grocery. So really, it really was like for me two hundred dollars at the end of the day, because I would have bought that stuff anyways at the store. And that's nice, and I think that's like a really good price. And you know, hopefully that deal I showed you guys is still up there if you're interested. And uh, but the problem is, like, yeah, you're gonna have to buy games, and I did buy them on like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatever you want to call it. And everything was 40% off. So games kind of felt like a little bit better. Um, they're not priced like full games like you would see on Xbox. They're not like $60, $70. Everything's about $30. But having 40% off like helps you because you do like want to have a nice library. You don't want to just buy things and then suddenly not be able to use it for a bunch of different things, right? Like one thing I wanted to go over was sports. I wanted to have, have Beat Saber, obviously. That's just like something to entertain guests, something for me and my girlfriend. Uh, Mini Putt is really good too. And I'll maybe do a separate video on like my recommendations. Um, and I bought like Star Wars, just a little bit of every genre that way I can get things going. And if I want to buy more after that, and I also bought Resident Evil 4, which is just like something for me. So uh, let's jump over into kind of the experience I've had in the last few days. And I talked about this a little bit, but yeah, like my experience with video games helped me out a lot during the whole process. So my girlfriend, you know, just isn't someone who like plays a lot of video games or like didn't grow up necessarily playing video games like to the level that I did. So she uh, struggled a little bit more. Uh, when it came to all the games, everything was like, you know, it's fast paced. It's crazy. Like, it's a really interesting experience. So I will say that, like, if you're like brand new and like this is just something that you're foraying into, you definitely want to have someone who's a little bit more experienced. Uh, otherwise, it would be 
kind of hard to get used to. Even the setting up process, I talked about a simple, I only think that now, like thinking back on it, it was simple because I'm so familiar with like interfaces and you know, I've had so many game consoles over time in my PC, but it may not be so easy uh, for anybody else. Uh, if you're getting this for like a significant other or getting this for like essentially like a party trick. Um, so that's just something that I think is worth mentioning. Um, talking about that price uh, just a little bit more. I would not personally, I know everyone has different finances, but I would personally would not get this for $300. Like I said, you do need to get games and that's going to spend you, you know, at least an extra hundred dollars. So I think in total value, right? I probably spent 300 and like after the device and then buying all these games because you want to spend at least 50 to a hundred dollars on it. So if it's like, if you're watching this video and it's gone back up to 300, you know, watch out for like maybe Christmas time or any other of those like deal type of times, because you want to leave that room to buy extra stuff because you don't want to be cheap after you get it. Okay, uh, now on to my experiences with actually using the device. Uh, at first, it was a little weird. In fact, that there's like, there's a little, uh, you know, opening at the bottom. And I could like kind of peek into like, what was going on outside of the VR system. And my, my brain was just like naturally going there. And I could just like see my real body and it almost like took me out of the experience a little bit. Uh, but the interesting thing about VR, I think, is that your body like over time, like my eyes and I guess my brain really kind of learn to like ignore that like kind of bottom half of it and you kind of get into it. It really does take time, I think, also for your eyes to adjust to it. So I don't think that your first experience when you use it is going to be the same as like the third day even. Like I began progressing more and more. And it's also just like very interesting, you know, watching someone else play it. Um, and I guess that is one of the downsides to it. Like, you know, again, I bought this pretty much for my girlfriend and I to use and have fun, you know, on the weekends just to do like some unique and different stuff, right? Because that's what the VR system is really all about. But it is hard to pass it between two people, right? I have a big head. My girlfriend doesn't have as big of a head. So, you know, when we're trying to switch off, we're playing Beat Saber, there is that kind of moment where you have to take it off and you like be like, okay, this is your space, you know, put it on and I have to adjust it for her. And I think that is like one of the downsides. And I don't really know what could be done about that, if anything at all. But I do think it's worth mentioning. It's not really like it's you need to have like rounds and set up where like each person gets a certain amount of time because it's not really something that you want to switch off between the two. Um, the next thing I'll mention is casting is a little bit difficult. And uh, maybe I'll do like a quick tutorial video. That'll be like 30 seconds or so if people can see how it's done. But, you know, when I like watch football on Sundays, just as a quick example, you know, I have my iPad and I have the option to cast it to my LG TV. And I figured, okay, well, there's casting on here and people say it works pretty good. So I thought, okay, awesome. That's, uh, that's exactly what I'll do. But yeah, it doesn't cast to like televisions directly. It needs to cast it like a plugged in like service, like an Apple TV or a fire stick. I think that's the only way, uh, but you can basically shoot it to your phone. Cause you will connect to the meta to your phone that you can actually buy stuff from the store and it'll like, you know, download to your headset, which is really cool. But yeah, you can, you know, basically send it to your phone and then you can send your phone to the TV. It does lag quite badly. I, it, I also had like, it's actually like a really bad performance, which is kind of unfortunate. But, you know, it seems like when you're actually playing something, it smooths up. But when you're in the menus, it slows down. Again, these are just things worth mentioning because now like going back, like I definitely would have bought myself like an Apple TV. I'm, I don't really I'm particularly interested in paying full price for one. So the AirPlay will just have to work. And pretty much by the end of it, I was actually just watching my girlfriend playing on my phone. It's kind of unfortunate to have like a big TV in front of you, so you can't really see the whole experience. But yeah, it's a lot smoother when you're just sending it to your phone, which, you know, makes sense because you're directly casting it there, right? A couple of things I think that are worth mentioning is like, this is the little strap they give you uh, to like put around the rim on the back of it. Because I found out when I, like I was playing basketball, I was just checking it out. Now the game was okay, but uh, I was sweating. Like you will sweat. Cause again, this thing's against your face. So like naturally, I think if you wear it for a long time, but like, yeah, when you're active, it really gets going and like the, the cushion part here is unfortunately like really comfortable and you don't really want to put anything on top of it because it does feel like the best. Uh, but I think it's just weird that, uh, yeah, this thing's like really flimsy. You would think it kind of, I don't know if snap on is the word that I'm looking for, but yeah, like it just like lazily lays on top of it. Uh, but I do recommend it uh, again, especially if you're switching off between people. No one wants your sweaty forehead against the cushion of this thing. But you know, typically when I'm playing alone, I will take it off. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. They also have glasses spacers. I can see a uh, close up. I can't see far away. So I was kind of interested to see 
what the difference would be. And it was kind of fine when I took my glasses off. Because I, te I guess technically you are looking like, you know, really close to you. You're just looking into a glass. So I didn't really, I mean, but there are things far away. So I don't even know like how your eyesight works with that. Um, but I actually just wear contacts if I ever am interested in wearing some sort of like eyewear because I don't know, especially if I'm switching off to my girlfriend and like, it just seems in, like uncomfortable in general. The straps aren't the best. In fact, but I kind of be interested in seeing what kind of third party stuff is out there. And I think there is probably a really big market for that. Moving on into the sound and I actually think it's really underrated. I was watching a lot of videos before I bought it just to see like, you know, what I was getting into in general. And uh, they talk about like, oh, the sound is okay and yada, yada, yada. And I was surprised. I think it's amazing. In fact, I think it's one of the best parts about it. There is 360 sound. Like if you're playing a game, you're on YouTube and you're watching a video, which I'll talk about here in just a second. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just the same. It's just like you're wearing headphones. But if you're playing a game, you can actually like turn your head around and the sound will like follow your ear. I think it's incredible. I also like that it is just kind of, um, it's not like, you know, you don't plug anything into your ear, which I think is nice when you're playing longer, right? Like anybody who wears headphones for a long time knows like how uncomfortable it can get after a while. And I just don't ever see that happening. It's like very crisp, it's very clear. And again, when you're playing one of those experiences, it's just so cool to be able to look around. It just adds to the immersion. And I do think that that is something worth mentioning. The sound quality is really cool. One thing uh, when I bought my Quest is I really kind of just thought it was going to be a gaming machine. You know, me and my girlfriend play party games on the weekend. And every once in a while, you know, I would play one of those story-driven games. And, you know, just kind of, you don't want to play for a long time. It kind of strains your eyes. And I don't think it's, like, generally good for you. The battery life is only about three hours. Uh, but one thing that I just kind of, like, went into a foray of and I was, like, just kind of barely looking into. And that is, like, watching content on it. I, I just didn't, in my mind, it just didn't register. That'd be something I would be interested in. I didn't really know what the quality would be like, but I'm here to say that I, it is so underrated. Like, it feels like when you're watching a video, any video, it feels like you're in a movie theater. The screen just looks huge, and I guess that's one of the cool things, right? I live in a fairly small apartment. I like my apartment, but, uh, you know, space is limited. It's an apartment by nature. And it just, like, when you do it and you're watching on the big screen, it just makes you feel like your space is so much larger. It's obviously an optical illusion, but you really do believe it. And I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but your eyes really do start to adjust and you really kind of just, like, let it go. When you kind of just, like, you know it's fake, but you kind of let yourself into the experience. Like, I can't show it for copyright reasons, but I was watching One Piece on Crunchyroll. And I was just like, I felt like I was in a watching it on the big screen and I was like laying back. It's all dark around it too, which is really cool. And I kind of almost wish that you could make it look like a fake movie theater of some sort, but yeah, you just like, you just, you know, step back and you're looking around and it's like the, the screen is curved. It's a very unique experience and something that I think more people should, you know, try out. Like watching all these videos, I never really heard anyone talk about that too much. I haven't watched a movie on it necessarily. It's just too hard in the middle of like a work week, I'm sure as most people do. But at some point, I'm definitely going to sit down and see what a full-length movie would be like to watch. And it's just overall very enjoyable. All right, now on to my final thoughts. So you're watching this video, should you buy a MetaQuest 2? And I'm going to say if you search for this video and you at least like looked up in the search engine and you fell upon this, I'm going to say the answer is probably yes. Like you're looking into an entry to the VR. You don't want to spend a thousand dollars, but you also don't want a crappy product. You know, you don't want to buy one of those cardboard VR headsets just to watch some videos on and it's kind of okay. This is really like a big step into VR in terms of accessibility. And I think that's really what VR is going to be. I know there's higher quality ones that are more expensive, but I don't like the idea of being plugged into a computer because I feel like it kind of goes against the very idea. I like the idea of having it on my table and I can just boot it up at any time and be able to watch it. And if you're curious enough to know if you like the MetaQuest 2 and you are looking for something affordable, I can't recommend it enough. It's been a really cool experience. I can't wait to try it out more. And I've had so many uh, good, like, story-driven games. I played the Battle Royale. And you just feel yourself getting better at it. And you feel yourself getting more immersed into it. And, uh, yeah, that's just kind of my final thoughts. Um, hopefully I made this short and sweet. Some of these videos can get pretty long. I saw on YouTube. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did you get one? Are you interested in one? And like I said, I wouldn't do it for $300 if that's the regular price tag that you're looking at. Wait till it goes on sale. That way you give yourself more room to buy more games and enjoy the full experience and different genres and the different things that you can do. But that's gonna do it. Uh, I'll see you guys later and have a good day.